Lex said that he's done 5,000 scenes. How many scenes have you done? I no, 5,000 5, cumulative women. Women, women 5,000 right. women. You had sex with 5,000 women. It's maybe It might be you know, maybe 100, 200, maybe less. Certainly not anymore, but I, I would say I'm easily about maybe f in the 5,000 range. 5,000 yeah. women. Yeah, How that's many amazing. Guys? Um, definitely not 5,000. Um, I'm going to say in porn, it's hard to say, but I'm going to say maybe around like 100, which is maybe even less. Because the thing is, like we, we just what we were talking about earlier, I tend to work with the same guys over and over again mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of guys. male talent. Right. And I've been in an industry for... Uh, almost 12 years and it's always been the same dudes right same you know? five guys yeah <laughs> I would pretty say, much you know i would say even if you let's say if we have that number to 2500 you know mathematically it makes sense Be but people don't take into consideration what happens in person's personal life right so right. if asked if you include my personal life then you might get you know um those numbers don't compare to what I've done professionally. Well, I right like now. I just to clarify, like my number, I'm gonna say between 100 and 200, but that it's way less than 200. I'm just kind of inflating it, but that includes my personal life too. So, <laughs> yeah, my number includes my personal life too. Right. You know, but definitely on camera, it would have to be at least. How many How many years you've been in the business? Almost 12. Okay, so yeah. I, this is my 17th. Right. So numerically, so, yeah. you know, just, you know. But also guys work more. Yeah. You know, and uh, beginning of my career, I was always under contract. When you're under contract, you don't work that much. Right. It's more of a, like, a, they push your name out there and you do a lot of publicity, but you will, you may do, like, five movies a year. So I didn't really get to fuck a lot in the beginning of my career. <laughs> what, what about off camera? Off camera? Uh, I've always had a boyfriend. Mm. So you had a boyfriend while you were doing porn? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been single for the past two years, and it's the longest I've ever been single. And I love it, like, too much. <laughs> I like it too much. Because <laughs> I don't have to answer to anyone. Like, I feel, okay. I don't know, it's, it's good. <laughs> did you have a boyfriend coming into porn? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh -huh. Was he in the porn industry himself? No. I've never, ever dated um, or been with anyone in the industry they're always i call them civilians because they're not in porn okay yeah so you started out with a civilian yeah <laughs> so what was it like with your civilian boyfriend when you came back from your first scene he was really understanding it was a girl girl scene not a big deal okay that's how it starts <laughs> that's how it always starts it's and the next thing you know scene. you have a dick in your ass and you're like baby i still love you <laughs> but eventually it doesn't work out because i think it has to get to a dude you know like could you could you see yourself dating a porn star it's still if she was still active and doing porn no and a lot of guys can't or a lot of guys love you and they love the, the I guess the, the image or the fact that they're dating Nikki Benz or whoever else and then when they get feelings developed for you then they don't want you to do porn anymore and that's how usually my relationships end well how did it even come up you know you have a boyfriend yeah and you were Working as what at the time? I was in Toronto, a stripper. You're I was trying stripper. to save money for college. Okay. So you're I, already kind of in the adult right. industry in a way, you know? So, yeah. Okay, so did your boyfriend or ex boyfriend have a problem with you stripping? No, because when he met me, I was already a stripper and he loved it. He loved, he was, he was that guy that he loved the attention that I got, but I was with him, so he got off on it. Okay. You know? So, how did you bring up the whole porn thing with him? He was a huge porn fan. He was a huge Jenna Jameson fan. I knew nothing about porn, and I'm like 19. So I did some research, I uh, looked into it, and I said, look, I'm really bored from being just a stripper. I, I just got bored going to the same club over and over again, and I'm like, I want to do something more. And I really wanted to be famous. <laughs> and I'm rolling my out. eyes because it's such a stupid reason to get into porn. But <laughs> I just wanted the and fame. And this is before social media, yeah, and yeah. Instagram, and the other. It's incredible because she built up and you became a, a huge star. 
prior to the introduction of social media. Yeah. Okay. Right, but I feel like also back then it was almost easier to be a bigger star because there was less girls in the industry, less right? Outfits. And when you were a contra girl, the company really put a lot of money behind you and your image and your name to promote you. Whereas now they don't really do that, you know. Well, now girls can through so social, social media, media can become stars it. on social media. Yeah. And then directors and producers can look at a girl's Twitter numbers mm -hmm. and say, if I have her in my movie, yeah. she's got two hundred thousand followers, so true. you know. Yeah. I know yeah. I cast, um, when I cast girls, I will look at a Twitter account to see how many followers she has and how she promotes what she's doing. Mm -hmm. So if she's promoting that she's going to be on a Lex Steel set, tomorrow I know that people are going to hit me on my Twitter and be like, hey, you're shooting, you know, Nikki, so -and -so, yeah. you know, or so and so. You know, even the build up of our scene yeah. began on social media prior to us having shot it. And then after the, the people in anticipation of its release, was ridiculous, and then this, the third wave was once it was released. Right. So it, it's making a difference now. Yeah. So you you and your boyfriend agree that you're gonna start doing scenes. Uh huh. You do a girl girl scene. He's cool with it. Yeah. At what point did it start stop being cool? Um. I I think I don't know. <laughs> I'm like I don't know. I don't know how. I can't speak for him, I, and a lot of it is also to do with me. I grew di more distant because I just saw a different vision for my career and my life than him. You know, like he was still sort of like, he was just a club promoter. He didn't want anything more for himself. And I just, I was sort of hungry and I was chasing after fame and I wanted the money. And I just was very business oriented, he wasn't. So I grew distant and I think that I'm, sh I'm sure put him off. I mean, I'm the one that broke up with him, but I could tell it bothered him, you know, it just, of course it does. Your girlfriend goes to work, fucks another guy, comes home to you and tries to cuddle or suck your dick and you're like, yo, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I can only imagine, I don't know, I'm not a guy, but I'm sure it's hard for any guy to do. And some guys are totally okay with it. I need to find that guy who's <laughs> completely okay with it. Well, I remember I interviewed Pinky recently and she was saying how her like longtime boyfriend, partner, whatever, uh, Jeremy, got off on her fucking other fucking guys other and guys. he would she would say like she knew it would be a good she knew it would be a good scene because he would get hard while while he's filming them you know jeremy's always fantasized about me being with other men he was there when i shot with mandingo you know when he shoots my scenes you know or scenes with other girls if he's not wood if he's not hard he knows it's not a good scene and oh, so he was a camera guy. He was a camera good. guy. Jeremy's a good director. Yeah, you know Jeremy. Yeah, his product, their, their product is really good. Yeah. Pinky's product. Yeah. And that was, that was their thing that, that, you know, worked for quite a while. I know directors who have girlfriends who are popular who won't shoot them with me, for instance, you know. Okay. Like with Jules, when Jules was with uh, Jenna Hayes, mm -hmm. I did a number of scenes with Jenna Hayes. And he shot it. And he yeah. Was shooting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've shot. Um, girls I was involved with personally. Right. Okay, so how did you feel about it? Um, when, when I shot girls I was involved yeah. with, I would always be thinking like, yo, I know you can do that better. So I wasn't tripping on okay. the fact that she was blowing another dude. I was like, yo, like, I know you've blown me to the bottom of my dick. Right. So how come you're not doing him? Like, turn up, you know, because we're making a, pro <laughs> we're making right. a product. <laughs> You know, but no, it's but things are a little bit different now. I, I don't know how I would, how I would deal with a girlfriend that worked regularly. Right. Maybe she was already in it when I started. It wouldn't bother me. Have you ever just dated a, like a, a civilian girl and gotten her into shooting? No, most of the girls I've been involved with, um, you know, that were civilians, um, they they had no interest in in, in doing movies. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I mean, you know, just just one of those, just regular, regular girl that, you yeah. know. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being a civilian and then hooking up with you. Like, I would be running the fuck out of there. No. With your no. dick size? Damn. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> no, it's, you know, what I find is that there's a, there's always been a mythology about the... Mythology. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, about a big black dick. And the thing about it is what you find is that when you are with someone that's a civilian, not a pro, so mm -hmm. to speak, the first thing is, yeah, there's intimidation, and then that intimidation gives way to curiosity, and then that curiosity gives way to confidence, because they're f finally presented with that mythical unicorn, and they want to see what they can do. 
when I presented. I experienced the unicorn, and I'm, I, your dick is huge. Yeah. I mean, and I'll, this is like a personal thing that I'm going to divulge. It's like, when we were doing our scene, I had to stop three times because, no word of a lie, like, your dick tore my pussy a little bit. Not mm. in the bad way. I was just like, all right, like, you know, like, it's huge. Yeah, it is. My pussy yeah. had to get used to nah, it. No, but you got to also remember, <laughs> I had wanted to, you've been a star for so long. I've been very aware of your popularity, and I've always wanted to work with you as well. Yeah. So when we worked together, it was not only was professional, but there was there was something personal where right. I wanted, uh, you know, I was like, wow, Nikki Benz is a girl. That, and what man would not want to have sex with Nikki? And as a regular guy, it was as much being a regular guy as it was being a pro when right. we worked together. So, you know, yeah, it was, uh, you know. It was a good scene. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm drooling right now thinking about it. But <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying I'm a porn star and, and I had difficulty for the first five minutes just mm -hmm. properly fitting it in yeah. there. I could only imagine a civilian girl looking at it going, oh, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, but you gotta figure, when we do movies, we're starting out in fifth gear. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When you're at home, you might, there's, you know, you're, you know, you're working out mm -hmm, too. And, and mm -hmm. you, who, well, yeah, you, sometimes it is time to come home and just get right into it. But generally, in your personal life, it takes a little bit of time. And you're not necessarily trying to throttle someone, right? <laughs> because that's what's expected. Them. Yeah, you know? yeah um, I get so, it. So, well, Lex, the biggest guy you've ever been with? Um, I There's think There's plenty so. of guys bigger than me who were the Flash. A fla yeah, but, like, I don't want to <laughs> talk about... I'm just saying you're big. You are right. definitely Would you say that the top, top. There's plenty of guys bigger than you? I would say, th yeah. Who? Not, maybe not plenty, but but... Like who? I don't really know. Oh, I mean, Flash Brown, Rico Strong, Flash Richard Mann. Flash is not bigger than you. Uh, yes, he is. I, I'm, I, hey, you know, hey, so I can admit it. That means no worries. You know, but they, I've worked with him. I've yeah. Okay. Well, like you Flash might have. Has a <laughs> Flash has a huge dick, but you have a huge dick. Okay. Okay. There's Mandingo, who's oh, the I've largest never in with creation. Him, yeah. There's Jack Napier. Okay, I haven't worked with um, him either. You know, you know, there's white guys. There's Manuel Ferrar. Now I'm saying these guys are, you know, Manuel Ferrar, Shane Diesel. Remember, who was the German dude? Chris, um... Oh, uh, yes. He was like a coach. Chris yeah. Charming. Yes, okay. I couldn't work with him. What? I couldn't. I couldn't. Because he's a size? Or no, because other things? Just thick. I just couldn't See? work. Like, yeah. I had a hard time. And this is like back in the day. And uh, I just couldn't like properly work with him. If I can't fit a dick in my pussy, I'm not going to do a good scene. Yeah. <laughs> See, so that makes he's bigger than me. So you've actually said, this is too big, I can't Yeah, it. because it, it wasn't, it, it was just really painful. It was just painful. Steve and Holmes. And maybe plus when you're not turned on, I've never worked with Steve. Mm. But also I have to be turned on. Like when I worked with Lux, like yeah. I was into it. So I was, mm -hmm. my body was ready. It just mm. took me five minutes to adjust to it. But if it's a guy that I'm not into, my vagina just goes <laughs> <laughs>